Hi, welcome back to Find the Revealed. In this episode, I want to talk about durable powers of attorney and guardian and conservatorships and a little bit more detail about what those involve so that you can get the timing right. Whether it's for you and you're thinking ahead to plan for your future and things that might happen um, if you have certain conditions that run in your family like Alzheimer's or you have, you're having some symptoms of some type of a de more debilitating uh, type of condition where it can affect your motor skills and you know signing your name or speaking or your cognitive skills which is your thinking and you're trying to plan ahead or if you have a loved one who is progressing down a path and you're concerned or doctors have told you that they are progressing and not likely to get better and you need to prepare for a time when they need help taking care of themselves and taking care of their personal business, their money, their bills, and things like that. If a person becomes incapacitated and they need someone, they are unable to take care of their daily living situation, food, shelter, bathing, getting around, and they need assistance, then a court can, can be applied to by an appropriate person to, who has connections with the person who can provide the information to the court to provide for someone to be a guardian and or conservator for that person. A guardian takes care of the person. So they would be in charge of taking care of the person, making sure they're clothed and fed and housed, medical situations and like that. Conservator generally takes care of their finances, paying bills, dealing with contracts, dealing with their um, taxes and their bills and their money and things like that. Can be the same person sometimes, sometimes it needs to be different. That is where someone has to go in and apply for that. It can be a family member, a close friend, there are uh, different rules for that. If it's possible, it's better for that person, if they're able to do so to designate and choose someone that they would like to help with those types of things if they continue to deteriorate and need that help. So these are conversations you need to have while they are still of sound mind because the document that can help with this would be obviously their will for when they die but while they're still alive it would be a durable power of attorney. I talk about this in a different video and I'll put the link below. A durable power of attorney is something that continues beyond when the person has legal capacity. But it's important to remember that when they sign this durable power of attorney, they can't already be too far gone. They have to be able to be oriented. Do they know what day it is? Can they say who? their local mayor is, who the president is, can they recognize uh, prominent people, do they recognize their family, can they talk about what they did yesterday, are they aware of what they're doing, are they aware of their consequences and are they aware of what this piece of paper means, what powers it gives to someone on their behalf and what that person can do with it. If they can't answer those types of questions, they don't have legal capacity and they cannot effectively sign, even though they might be able to scribble their name. If someone challenges that, everything that the person who did with that power of attorney could be that person's responsibility. So it's really important to have these conversations early so that everyone understands what is going to happen, who is going to do what, and they should also provide for alternates in case something should happen to the person that they designated. So those kinds of things are things to think about because when you sign a durable power of attorney, you're giving someone a great amount of power, and if you do it too early, and the power doesn't say when it's going to kick in 
that person has that authority from the date that you sign it. And so you might not want someone meddling in your affairs when you're perfectly capable of doing it. And so if you have a situation where you're going to have a surgery and it's beyond just a per occurrence or one particular transaction, as I talk about in a, a different video, if this is something where you're going into surgery, your you know anesthesia can have impact you and something might happen. And so you want to go ahead and give this some person a power of attorney in the event that you make it through the surgery, but you uh, lose, lose some abilities, whether those are known risks to the surgery or not, and you want them to be able to carry out your wishes for you while you're still alive, then you want to go ahead and do that. Um, but if you are helping someone or helping yourself and it is a eventuality and it's likely and it's coming soon that you are going to be incapacitated or that other person is going to be incapacitated get those papers signed whether it's for you or for another person while the person signing is still aware of everything that's going on and has the sound mind and capacity to do it because you can't run around and do it later it won't hold up and if you don't get a durable a power of attorney and they need they really need someone to help them with their day-to-day -day physical needs their financial needs and everything else the only other recourse is going to be as long as they're an adult if they're a child and you're their guardian or, a, or adult parent that's different but if they're an adult your spouse doesn't have automatic rights over you. Your parents don't have automatic rights over you. You are an adult person. If you don't give some other person the rights with the durable power of attorney and you are incapacitated or another person is, the only final recourse is to go to the court to have someone appointed. And that is a, at least that is a remedy, but it's not the best one. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Share it with someone who may need it. Leave any comments or questions below. Subscribe to see the other videos. And they're all arranged in a playlist. If you're new, welcome. We're happy to have you. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.